Chemistry lecture number 23, energy, photons, frequency, and wavelength. And the atom is made of electrons, protons, and neutrons. And there's something that interacts with the electrons in an atom. And it's electromagnetic energy that uh, interacts with the electrons. They also interact with the protons and neutrons in different ways, but we're going to focus on how uh, electromagnetic energy interacts with the electrons in a future lecture. Uh, first, we have to talk about what electromagnetic energy is. So, the heat we feel from the sun, the light emitted by a light bulb, uh, the ultraviolet rays that uh, hit our skin and give us sunburn, those are all forms of electromagnetic uh, energy. Also, radio waves and microwaves, those are all different types of electromagnetic energy. Now, electromagnetic energy exists as tiny, discrete packages called photons. For now, we can think of a photon as a tiny sphere made of energy. Weird things occur at the atomic level, and you're just going to have to trust me when I tell you how the photon behaves. Uh, at this point, I'm going to have to warn you that I'm going to tell you things that might not make sense or sound contradictory. Uh, weird things happen all the time in the quantum world, so you're just going to have to trust me when I tell you how uh, the photon behaves. Sorry about that. Uh, I also apologize to anybody with a PhD in physics watching this who may think I'm not explaining this correctly. Uh, unfortunately, I can't think of any better way to explain the strangeness of the quantum world. Here we go. A photon moves up and down in a wave pattern. Trust me. And right now there's a physicist saying, no, he's explaining it wrong, but uh, this is the best way we can do it. A photon moves up and down in a wave pattern. So here's our photon, and it's moving from left to right. And as it moves from left to right, it sort of oscillates up and down, and it creates a wave. All right, so this is the wave pattern created by the photon as it moves. Now, instead of drawing the photon moving, we just draw the waves and say the waves are moving like ocean waves toward the beach. So this is the same picture, only it doesn't have the little photon at the end. And we just say these waves are moving. So in the same way that you sometimes see uh, ocean waves moving across, uh, we say the photon uh, moves. And to show the photon moves, we just show these waves uh, that are moving. All right, the photon, or the waves, always moves at a speed of 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. This is the speed of light. And we use the letter C to represent the speed of light. So the letter C represents this number. Now suppose our wave is moving and six of its peak pass by us in uh, two seconds. So our waves here are waves, and the waves zoom past us. And uh, in two seconds, six of these little peaks go past us. So the waves move, six peaks pass by us, and it takes two seconds for the uh, waves to go by. The frequency of the wave, then, is six waves per two seconds, or six waves divided by two seconds. And that gives us three waves per second. So the frequency, we use the letter F to describe frequency, it's going to be six waves went past us in two seconds. So that's going to give us three waves per second. And sometimes they don't write the word waves, they just say three per second. And then sometimes instead of writing it like this, we write three seconds to the negative one. Seconds to the negative one is the same as one over seconds. And then instead of writing that, we write three hertz. So hertz is another way of saying waves per second. Three waves per second. Okay, so instead of saying three waves per second, we write three hertz or three hz. Hertz was named after a scientist who did work on uh, the waves of a photon. All right, so three hertz means that in one second, three wave peaks will pass by. So frequency is the number of waves that can pass a point in one second. The distance between wave peaks is the wavelength. And we use the Greek letter lambda to represent wavelength. 
So here's our wave, and the distance between the peaks is the wavelength, and we use this Greek letter lambda to represent wavelength. Wavelength is also, well, wavelength is the distance between corresponding points on a wave. So distance between the peaks, or it could have also been the distance between uh, the troughs. You'll get the same number. Both these and these are the same wavelength. Um, like this section right here uh, on the wave, that corresponds with this section right here, and you can say that uh, this section also represents the wavelength. But whatever, uh, as long as you pick corresponding points, you'll get the same answer. They're all the same, uh, you'll get the same wavelength. Well, wavelength is measured in both meters and nanometers, and the distance between wave peaks is very small in a photon. Uh, for example, a photon of green light could have a wave of 5 times 10 to the negative 7th meters. So that's a 5 with 6 zeros uh, in front of it. Now it's awkward to say 5 times 10 to the negative 7th meters, so we convert it to nanometers by multiplying it times a billion, and we'll get 500 nanometers, which is easier to say. So to convert meters to nanometers, you just multiply it times a billion, 10 to the 9th. 5 times 10 to the negative 7th will give you a 5 times 10 to the 2, which is the same as 500. So that's how you convert uh, uh, meters into nanometers, just multiply it times a billion. Now, unfortunately, we have to convert nanometers into uh, meters when we do wavelength calculations. So, to convert nanometers to meters, you just slap on 10 to the negative ninth, and that'll put your answer into meters. So, to illustrate, one nanometer to convert it into meters, you just slap on times 10 to the negative ninth. One nanometer is one times 10 to the negative ninth meters. A nanometer is a billionth of a meter. How do I convert two nanometers to meters? Well, just slap on 10 to the negative ninth. Two nanometers is the same as 2 times 10 to the negative ninth meters. And to convert 500 nanometers to meters, 500, slap on 10 to the negative ninth, there we go, 500 times 10 to the negative ninth meters. So that's how you convert nanometers into meters, just tack on times 10 to the negative ninth. Now there's a mathematical relationship between speed, wavelength, and frequency of a photon. Mathematically, it's expressed this way. C equals lambda times frequency. You know, in some chemistry books, uh, for frequency, uh, instead of using the letter F, which I think is more uh, logical, they use the Greek letter nu. They use that letter for uh, frequency, but we're not going to do that. I think F is an easier one to remember. So. C is going to be the speed of light, this number. Lambda is wavelength in meters. And then F is going to be frequency in hertz. Although you might see this funny little letter to represent uh, frequency in other chemistry books. All right, so let's try a problem. A photon has a wavelength of 500 nanometers. What's the frequency? Well, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to convert nanometers into meters. So they tell us the wavelength is 500 nanometers. To convert that to meters, slap on times 10 to the uh, negative ninth. So this is going to be 500 times 10 to the negative ninth meters. All right. Um, we're going to use the formula C equals wavelength times frequency. C, the speed of light, is always going to be 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Wavelength. 500 times 10 to the negative ninth meters. And we're going to solve for the frequency. And uh, I don't like including the units because I tend to make mistakes and mess things up. So I always just write the numbers. And from this point on in this lecture, all I'm going to do is just write the numbers. Okay, so frequency is going to be 3 times 10 to the eighth divided by 500 times 10 to the negative ninth. So if you grind that out, uh, you're going to end up with 6 times 10 to the 14th. And we're dealing with frequency, and the units of frequency is hertz, so we put hz next to it. So what this means is that a photon, which has this particular wavelength with the peaks that close together, that means that in one second, 6 times 10 to the 14th wave peaks can zap by you. That's a pretty fast uh, little photon there. Let's try this one. The frequency of a photon is 8 times 10 to the 14th hertz. Find the wavelength. Well, let's see. 
C equals wavelength times frequency. C, the speed of light, is always going to be 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Wavelength, that's what we're going to solve for. And then frequency is 8 times 10 to the 14th hertz. All right, so it looks like wavelength is going to be 3 times uh, 10 to the eighth divided by um, 8 times 10 to the 14th. And what we'll end up with is 3.75 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. Now how do I know it's meters? It's because this speed unit is in meters per second. So my length unit is going to end up in meters. And then if you want to express this in nanometers, um, if you multiply it times a billion, you'd uh, end up with 375 nanometers. But you could leave it like this. I think it's perfectly correct to leave it uh, in meters. If you know the frequency of a photon, you can calculate its energy from uh, E equals HF. E is the energy of the photon in joules. Joules is how we measure energy or heat. H is something called Planck's constant. It's just a number, 6.62 times 10 negative 34th joules per hertz. Uh, it shows how much energy a photon has per hertz of frequency it has. And then F is going to be the frequency in hertz. So. What is the energy of a photon whose frequency is 6 times 10 to the 14th hertz? Well, we're going to do E equals HF. We're going to solve for the energy. H is Planck's constant, 6.62 times 10 to the negative 34th. I'm not going to put the units in because I tend to make mistakes. F is going to be 6 times 10 to the 14th. If you multiply these two values together, you're going to end up with 3.97 times 10 to the negative 19th, and the unit of energy is joules. Right, that's our answer. Okay. The wavelength of a photon is 400 nanometers. Find the frequency and energy of the photon. Well, let's see. So we have to find the frequency first. And we've got 400 nanometers. All right, so first let's convert this into meters. So 400 nanometers, that's going to be 400 times 10 to the negative ninth meters. All right, now we can find the uh, frequency. C equals wavelength times frequency 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second equals 400 times 10 to the negative ninth times frequency. This number divided by this number, your frequency is going to be 7.5 times 10 to the 14th hertz. Okay, so that's the answer to the first part. We solve for the frequency. And now the energy, we're going to take this energy, or this uh, frequency, to solve for the energy. E equals HF. H is 6.62 times 10 to the negative 34th. That's always going to be the value of H. H represents this number. Frequency is 7.5 times 10 to the 14th hertz. If you multiply these two numbers together, you should get 4.96 times 10 to the negative 34th joules. All right. And there's our answer. You might get a problem where they just tell you uh, the frequency and they say find the energy, but then they won't mention frequency. Uh, implicitly, you would have to solve for frequency before you um, found the energy. Okay? All right then. This has been chemistry uh, lecture uh, number 23, energy, photon, frequency, and wavelength. Uh, for a PDF transcript of uh, this lecture, go to uh, www.richardlouis.com.